It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Z Garcia. Hey folks, today we're going to be taking a look at a little French card game called Noah, which comes in this little tin here. And it's a game in which you are attempting to load animals into Noah's arcs. Apparently he has several of them for this game. And you are um, trying to get rid of your hand of cards. It's a pretty straightforward game. Let me show you how the game works, and then we'll come back. I'll tell you what I think of this little metal brick. To set up the game, you're going to put together this little puzzle board here in the middle, which is going to keep track of the uh, score, and you're going to put five of these fairies out in a circle at the little piers. There's a few that are set aside as well. Uh, there are three more of these. Then you're going to put from the deck here, shuffled, you're going to put one animal at each of the fairies. So you would just flip and put them there like so. And as you can see, these cards are really very attractive. Really, really cute stuff. And so they go like that, and then each player is going to get eight cards. The objective of the game is basically to get the fewest points, which they call tier points. And the, the points are here on the sides of the animals. That's what you want to avoid. You want to have basically is to run out your hand of cards, or if you do have cards, to have very few of those. And so each player, like I said, is going to get eight cards. And uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then on your turn, you attempt to play. We're going to also put Noah here at a random pier. And so on your turn, you are going to play a card, typically, and then... Um, Hopefully you, you might even be able to play twice, and then you have to move Noah, and he will go to a different place where the next player will have to play. And so in your turn, basically when there's, a, uh, when there's an arc that has a single animal on it, you can decide the order in which that arc will fill up. And what I mean by that is, if I play this here, for example, then I've, I've, I've established a pattern. The pattern is male, male, and so everything will be male in that arc. If I do the other sex, then they have to alternate. So you have to go blue, pink, blue, pink, blue, pink until it's filled. And when it is filled is when we hit 21. 21 is the most each of the arcs can carry. And so on my turn, I would do something very simple. I would, let's say, play this one here. The weight at that arc now is 6, so we're still good. It's not 21. And then I would move Noah according to the animal symbol here. So. Typically, if it's a female, it'll move from here to one of the two, uh, right, adjacent to it. And if it's a male, it'll cross to one of the two opposite. So the female here means I will put it, let's say, there. And the next player would play, and let's say, I'm going to use just the same hand of cards here for the example. But let's say they'll play, and they'll play, let's say, the donkey there. There's already a seven, and the six is only uh, 13, so everything's okay still. Now the donkey over here is a little symbol, which means he's stubborn. And when you play, he will not move Noah. Noah will, in fact, stay there. And so the next player would go. Now, what happens if when it's your turn, you either don't have the right animal. So let's say, you know, the next player has to play there and they have no male animals. Let's say that's all they have. Or they could only play and go above the 21. Well, in that case, they have to take everything back from that arc and play a single new card there again, which is bad. You have to take all the cards back. However, if you can hit 21, then that arc will sail. And at that point, you would take everything there, you would discard it, you would replace it with one of these arcs set aside, and you could give a card away to one of your opponents from your hand. If it's the first arc that sailed, you get to give away one. Once another one sails, you get to give away two if you're the one that makes it go. Three, the third one three, the fourth one four. At that point, typically someone has been able to rid themselves of all the cards in their hand, and then you, once that happens and someone has uh, gotten rid of all the cards in their hand, then everybody looks at their hand, they count how many tiers they have, four, six, seven, eight, nine in this case, and they would get that many points on this track. Again, these are bad. So the winner at the end of the game is going to be whoever has the fewest of these on the track. The game is going to be played for three consecutive rounds. Uh, so we would reset everything once that happens, play again, reset everything, play again. And whoever has the lowest 
tier score that is the winner. As I uh, showed you, the donkey there has a special power, and there's a couple of other cards that have a special power. So, for example, here the snail. When you play the snail, you get to pick if it's a male or a female. So that's uh, cool. And then we have, um, let's see, let's look through here, see what else we've got. Okay, the giraffe lets you look at someone else's hand of cards, typically the person right after you, so that you can send Noah somewhere inconvenient. Donkey you saw. Let's see here. Oh, okay, the woodpecker is not the brightest guy, and he starts pecking away at the arc, and so he makes the weight limit go down from 21 to 13. You could not play him if, if once he comes into play, it's already past 13. You can play him there, but... Um, it's it's a limiting factor. It would make a 13 and, and possibly screw up who's after you. The uh, line here lets you uh, trade some cards. Uh, woodpecker. Saw them. That's basically it. There's just a couple of little things. Uh, the one more thing I want to explain here, which I talked about, you might be able to play multiple times in a row. The way that works is, if when you play, so let's say Noah is right here, there is a cat there. If when I play, I play the, the partner to that card, let me find it, here kitty kitty, there we go. So if I play, there's a cat, male cat, I play the female cat on that, I can go again. I would move Noah, and I could play over there. And now if I play the rhino, female rhino, I could go again. So you could keep going like that, and, and so you got to watch out for being able to make that combination and get rid of a bunch of cards all at once. But that's basically it, that's the game. You play three rounds. You try to have the fewest tier points in your hand at the end of those three rounds, and if you do so, you are the winner. Obviously, the first thing that everybody says when they take a look at the game or see the cards is that it's extremely cute, and that's true. The game is cute. That's a plus. I, I like the look of the game a lot. Um, obviously, some people will not like the look of the game and think it's too cutesy, right? It's uh, sugary sweet, but I like it. I think it works well. It's attractive to bring it out, put it on the table. People will be attracted to it. The game itself, I think, is really interesting. I don't think it's a mind-blowing game. I don't think it's revolutionary by any means. As you can tell, it's a, it's a pretty straightforward idea. But I really like a few things in it that I think make it unique and original. And it's, it's using ideas that are commonplace to people that have played things like Uno, that have played, you know, classic card games. And so... I think the game makes a really good case for being the kind of game that could replace Uno in a family's game collection, you know, and maybe that's one of the five games they have. I think this could be one of those games. I think this game has that appeal of being attractive, being simple, oh, you got stuck with the really uh, bad cards, ha ha ha, you know, it's got that going on with it. The parts that I was saying are original are the way Noah moves around the, the board I think is really cool. I like the idea of being able to control how the arcs are loaded. So if you go, uh, you know, male, male, or female, female, then everybody else is forced to do that because maybe your hand has a lot of female characters, so I like that. It's got a little more control than a lot of those kinds of games like Uno would, would give you. And so I like that, and I think it's, again, it's a really tiny package. It's inexpensive. This makes a very strong case for a good family game. Uh, the my favorite thing about it is that I can teach it easily. I it, it's it works well. It works quickly. I sometimes it can go a little long, and so you might want to play say two rounds instead of three if you're in a hurry. Play one round if you want to. So there is that to it. But ultimately, I give this one a thumbs up. It's. Um, it's nothing I rate a 10 or anything like that, but I like it a lot. I think it's a it's a little keeper. It's a tiny little game. It's cute. Works well. I think you should check it out if you haven't if you haven't looked into this one. I uh, I recommend you you try it with family, with friends, maybe kids. You know, it's a good one. Noah, an adorable little game, a good replacement for something like an Uno or something like that. Much better graphics, cute theme, works really well. Check this one out, Noah. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff. 
in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.